Hello, it's me, Richard Herring. I'd like to welcome you to Rahalastapa, my podcast with... This week's guest is Dave Johns, the comedian and actor. You may have seen in, in, him in I, Daniel Blake. He is Daniel Blake. So he's the only person who can say that. I'm not a Daniel Blake. He is. He's in Fisherman's Friends. He's all over the place now. And he's a fantastic stand-up, as you're going to find out from this podcast, with a lot of crazy stories. Um, you can also build walls, so if, you, if you're looking for one. Um, look, thanks very much for watching and listening to these podcasts. Do keep that up if you can and, uh, spread the word to other people. Um, the more people we have listening, especially the better. And, uh, if you feel like donating some money, sorry, I've just been drinking a fizzy cola and burping a little bit. Um, why not to become a badger? Go com slash badges. You will get backstage interviews with every guest, at least five minutes of extra stuff, usually the emergency question stuff. I know you love that. Uh, you will get my stand-up shows. Be able to watch those there. Uh, you will get lots of other sort of extra videos and all that sort of stuff, like the Stone Clearing documentary, the Snooker tournament, and other things that will uh, generally usually only go to Kickstarter people. Extras from DVDs we're going to add in there. Uh, and you get a membership card, you get a membership badge, you get a secret code to share with other Rahalist badges. You'll be helping us make more content. We are trying to make an audio sitcom in 2020. Uh, we're trying to branch out and do more stuff. Uh, if you cannot become a badger, uh, there's a prize drawer as well. There's all sorts of stuff. If you can't become a badger, then just spread the word. Uh, if you can come and see it live, that's a big help as well. RichardHang.com slash gigs. We are trying to get you some fantastic guests in 2020. Uh, or just watch and listen from home. It's all It all counts. Support us if you like it. Uh, tell your friends if you like it. If you don't like it, tell your friends as well, because they're probably dicks as well. So only good, only cool people like this show. It's, it's just well known. Look, two minutes and eight seconds have passed. Let's sit back, relax, and enjoy Rahana Stapa with David Johns from the Newcastle Stand. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stand in Newcastle. Please welcome a man who you haven't just seen. He's, this is the first time you've seen him, remember? Uh, who has just owned Piers Morgan, according to the Polk website, <laughs> is Richard Herring. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, Newcastle. Welcome to the show. Uh, welcome to uh, Richard Herring's Limbo Shall Transpire podcast. Um, just trying to come up with something. There's so many podcasts now, you have to come up with a new idea. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, celebrities who have just died, uh, but who've not lived a particularly bad or good life, uh, have to go into heavenly limbo and I'll probably also do some limbo dancing while they're there. And we're then. We'll work out which way they're going to go. Well, it'll take several millennia of waiting. Uh, I was hanging around uh, in Biker Grove. I mean, it had to be, didn't it? <laughs> the other day. And uh, Spuggy was there. Spuggy was there. She's now... She's a middle-aged woman with four children. Uh, one of them, who ironically was blinded by a paintball gun. You'd think she... Of all the people, you'd think she would have... All people, you think she would have learned. Some of the younger Newcastle people going, I don't know what's going on. What's... <laughs> Surely Spuggy is still worshipped. Anyway, Spuggy and three of her kids call it Rahul so I don't know if that's going to... Uh, and yeah, I, I, apparently I owned uh, Piers Morgan. Uh, Piers Morgan uh, on Twitter this week, uh, uh, the week of recording, uh, was uh, a, a man called Jim Bendell had taken issue with Piers Morgan because uh, he, uh, with his treatment of Extinction, Extinction Rebellion uh, spokesperson. Uh, and... Uh, and, and Piers Morgan tweeted him back and says, Oh, Jim, I understand. Uh, I, feel, I understand your pain. I'd feel bitter if my surname was an anagram of Bellend. Um, so I tweeted him back and said, Rather than being an anagram of Spermy, spermy Organ. So uh, that is what apparently I'd. <laughs> Which, uh... 
That's Spermy with an I, but I think it's still... I think it's still... Is that, is that, his name is an anagram of a lot of things, weirdly. Which makes things he's not a real person. Grim Persona is one of his uh, anagrams as well. I'm just fine. Uh, there's, there's several rude ones. Uh, some people argue it should be I, Sperm Organ in the... In the I thought that was a bit too classical. I think, it's, I think sperm organ is funny. Anyway, we're here in, um, we're here in uh, Newcastle. Uh, it's lovely. I'm going to actually, I'll talk about that next week. And ironically, it sort of is a different audience next week. I'm confused. Uh, so um, uh, I was very I was topical when this was recorded. Uh, Pizza Express in danger of uh, uh, closing down. A lot of uh, people making uh, the same joke about calzone. Not good. But uh, that, I, I didn't do that. Uh, but I'm upset because Pizza Express is my favourite restaurant. I always used to go on dates there. And I had a cast iron. I mean, I'm married now, so I don't go on dates there if my wife's listening. <laughs> and uh, I had a cast iron guaranteed 100% successful seduction technique, which I, you can still use if Pizza Express is open. You have to order the Veneziana pizza, and then when the bill comes, say, I don't want to pay the 25p discretionary contribution to the Venice in Peril Fund. <laughs> as I hate Venice, and I want it to sink into the sea. 100% times I did that, got a shag. So uh, it's, uh, it's, girls love it if you hate Venice, that's what I'm saying, so 100%, I did it twice, 100%, 100%, that's how I seduced Julia Sawala, ladies and gentlemen, that was, that worked. That was the line that worked. And what I wanna know, is Venice clubbing together to save Pizza Express? No, it isn't, the fuckers, it's all take, take, take. They're living in a place that's sinking. They don't deserve any money. Give the money. Give some money back to Pizza Express, you cunts. Anyway, it's lovely to be here in Newcastle. I'll talk about Newcastle next week. Uh, I just want to say, I will never do this podcast in Sunderland. That is a, that is a guarantee. <laughs> Fuck Sunderland. Fuck them. And anyone who's travelled down from Sunderland for this gig. So, uh, is my guest this week. Um, he's probably best known for playing cheesy Alan Supple in... Tea, in time, gentlemen, please. <laughs> the fantastic pub landlord <laughs> sitcom that you all know very well of. Will you please welcome the amazing Davy Jones, ladies and gentlemen. Davy Jones! Davy Jones! Davy Jones! Hello. Yeah, I had. I had. I had. Sit down. Davy Johns. Cheesy Allen Supple, one of my Cheat. one of my top roles. That it was, it was. This well, is was... this is something you don't see very often nowadays. Actually, a Geordie working underground. But there you go. <laughs> Not bitter. Cheesy Allen Supple, cheeky Allen Supple was played by Frank Skinner, and yeah. you were a tribute actor. Yeah, yeah. What happened? Allen... To, what's happened to Frank Skinner? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. he took got... the wrong role. <laughs> So it's lovely to see you, David. Yeah. We've uh, we have known each other for quite some time. Yeah, yeah. and uh, we met. Oh, yes, yeah, we met. In you were a small child when I first. Met I was. You. You Never were... thought that was a bit weird, but <laughs> now it's balanced yeah. out. Now, wasn't now, it? And you were a middle-aged <laughs> yeah, man when I met you, and now it's. And I was knocking about with a four-year-old kid, but now it doesn't seem as weird now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, it does when we still go on the park and I push you on the swing. <laughs> 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 But, but apart from that, apart from that, it's, it's, it's cool. We yeah. met in, uh, I think probably the first time we met, we might have met on the circuit, but in, in Adelaide in 1997, we, 97. All went, we went out with a load of comedians to sort of an unofficial <laughs> Adelaide festival. It was weird, wasn't it? It wasn't the official Adelaide festival. <laughs> it, was, it was run by some... It was behind some bike shed. <laughs> it was. Are you looking for the festival? <laughs> <laughs> the festival? <laughs> so we were, there was a comedy festival and it was quite a lot of, you know, we, I think it was the first time any of us had really been abroad with, com yeah, with our yeah, comedy. Yeah, you could tell we, we mental, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, it was, we, we were all, there was put up in this big motel and there was a jacuzzi and... The uh, Arca Bar Hotel and there was uh, in you and Stu, a young-faced young lad. We were. And uh, I, 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 was, I, was, I was just saying, you know, I just remember, I've got this photograph of him and Stuart and they're in this jacuzzi and, 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 and it's brilliant. And I, and I just took it and then I thought, this is brilliant. And... and it's them two sitting in the jacuzzi like this. And then there's a, two comics on the other side. And there's a guy called Michael Smiley, who's an actor now. He's done a lot of quiet films. And a, and a, and a Scottish guy called Parrot, who is this crazy Scottish guy. And, and Smiley's sitting with his bald head and Parrot's balancing his cock and his balls. <laughs> on, and these, these two are sitting like this. <laughs> and, and I can see their face going, we've got a month of this. <laughs> 
it was day one, it was day one, wasn't it? Yeah, day one, it was a brilliant, yeah. Yeah, because I think we landed and they all took a load of magic mushrooms, I think, when they landed. It was about, yeah, it was about 40 degrees. It was crazy. It was nuts. A lot of people going, I mean, Australia's a weird place for comedians to go anyway. A lot of people go nuts and end up getting divorced and marrying someone else and then divorcing them. It happens a lot. So I managed to get, never get married when I went out there, but it was fantastic. So you're... We went, we all, Oh, um, oh. We also went on the trip. Yeah, we uh, had an we amazing got, trip. <laughs> we got invited. We said, would you like to go to Kangaroo Island? And we thought, yeah, that'd be pretty cool, Kangaroo yeah. Island. And so we're going to meet. So, so we, met on that, we met on that jetty and you had all come in. And I was late. And you're going, where have you been? And I went, <laughs> and I, went I had to get something. And I'd hired a clown. <laughs> A female clown, yeah. Fred, didn't I? Fred, yeah. And you goes, what? And I goes, yeah, I hired a clown. I goes, I always go on safaris with a clown. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got, and I've got photographs again yeah. if, if, on Kangaroo Island of if if, if, if her behind a rock. And she's like, behind a rock, and she's behind a gum tree, and she's, <laughs> she's like this. And I tell people that there was a circus. <laughs> um, <laughs> A plane crashed, <laughs> and, this, and, they, and, and they went feral, and all. <laughs> and you, and it, see, and you and Stuart were going, this, this is the second day, and they got clowns. <laughs> she stayed in character pretty much the whole time, I think. So you, you know, I mean, some... yeah, I paid about you know hundred dollars. Yeah. I, I, I said, how much did you get the clown for a day? And, she, and I said, I'll give you double. And she went, okay. So we hired her for a day, and she yeah. says, what? And I didn't tell her. And I said, we're going to Kangaroo Island. <laughs> and I said it was for kids. <laughs> <laughs> and it was all these comics. And, and she ended up marrying a comic, she didn't did. she? Yeah. She did. <laughs> and she's still dressed as a clown, she even to this day. Clown, yeah. We don't know what she looks like underneath the makeup. Yeah. It, was, it was great standing on her feet and pushing her backwards. <laughs> It must have been weird for her turning up and you think it's going to be a kid's party and then there's loads of men there going, oh, fuck, on an island. They've taken me to an island. <laughs> That's why I had to pay a double. <laughs> so, Davey, it's, uh, you've had an amazing uh, story through your career. Um, it is, it, it, as I was saying to you, I was saying to you backstage, it, you've, you've become an enormously successful as, as an actor in recent years. It's taken a long time before till we got to that point, but I think any other comedian, if it had happened to on the circuit, there'd have been some mumbles of, oh, that fucking cunt. Has, has he got this? <laughs> but <laughs> there, it, might be, there might be some of them. There might be know. someone, someone do that, but it's yeah. bit, it was sort of amazing to be part of that community. Everyone was so... Uh, yeah, it was a bit crazy, yeah. Yeah, everyone was so pleased. I won, I won and, Best Newcomer. I won, I won Empire Best Newcomer at the age of 62. <laughs> And this is no. And when I got the, when I, when I got home with the award, I was yeah. really chuffed. The NHS had sent me through the post an over sixties bowel cancer test. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you try to leave, they pull you back. <laughs> I mean, that took the shine off it. You know, <laughs> there's your award. Now shit in that tube and send it off in the post. What did you do after your award? Did you drink champagne? <laughs> no, I shat in a little tube and posted it. <laughs> but you've been a stand-up for a, for a long, you know, decades before this happened. Yes. And before that, you were a brick, bricklayer. You worked behind the scenes in theatres, right? Yeah, yeah, 30 years I've been a stand-up. Yeah. And it was weird, because every time I went on stage, I realised nobody knew who the fuck I was, you know? I mean, if I'd been a spy, that would have been a brilliant career. <laughs> 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 You see, if you're a spy and nobody knows you, go, he's very successful. <laughs> if you're a comic and nobody knows you, it's like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah, and then Daniel Blake came on and, yeah. and, and Ken Loach, and it all went crazy, you know? Yeah. yeah. I, mean, it's, I mean, you had done acting before that, though, as well. So you've, you've, you've always been quite experimental, as well as... There's a lot of guys like you, I think, aren't there, that have been doing stand-up for, since they were young and, and carry on doing stand-up. And in, in a way, you give false hope to all of... Us other middle-aged men think, oh, we'll probably get discovered by Ken Loach in a minute and get, yeah, get to hang out yeah. with Meryl Streep. When Ken Loach be fine. does his next film about a middle-class successful <laughs> comic. <laughs> Have you seen Ken's new movie about the middle class, lad? <laughs> yeah, apparently, he couldn't get any quince on a Tuesday. <laughs> I actually had a uh, I actually had a quince tree in the garden of my house. <laughs> I, know you I didn't. Did. I didn't know what it was. Of course you did. I didn't know what it was. We bought a house and it had a quince tree. Of course you did. So <laughs> it fell down. It was terrible. 
<laughs> it fell down. Ken we had Luch to take it out. in one of his most moving films ever. <laughs> <laughs> the Fallen Quinn Remember Street. the great Bollinger shortage of 87. <laughs> When you are down to your last Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> what? Not even a drop of cover for the children? No, no. I'm but you, <laughs> you're the nicest you're allowed, middle class you're, you're, allowed to, you're allowed to take the piss out of me. It's absolutely fine. You're a big uh, actor. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I could be the evil role in a Ken Loach yeah, film. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you were literally about to give up stand up there when you were, were you feeling like you were, that, that I've heard you t t quoted as saying you were sort of on the point thinking, why am I traveling around the country? What for? happened was I was trying to, like, like, you know, I'd been a stand up, I'd love stand up. I started a club in Newcastle in the early 80s and, and you lads played the theatre that time, didn't you? You know, like, in a fist of fun. And, and it's, I love stand up, but you get, like, as you, as you get older, traveling on trains and, you know, and, and bus replacement services, you know, and all that, you know. And, and, and my daughter is 13, and, and when, when she was about sort of um, 11, I was down in Scarborough with her. We, we, we go away on, 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 on road trips, and I was talking to the bloke who rang the donkeys. Yeah. And he goes, and he says, I run these donkeys, and I only work in the summer, then I live in the south of France. And I thought, <laughs> <laughs> the donkeys and the summer up here is only two deers so that <laughs> he charges two quid and posh people you don't have to stable the donkeys because posh people have got horses they look after the donkeys in the winter because they make very good companions okay. so I looked into it and basically I, I was going to run donkeys and I thought because Whitley Bay in time I haven't had a donkey since the 60s yeah but then it was uh, public liability insurance you have to get now in the 60s if you were a kid and you fell off a donkey you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> now apparently it's a donkey's fault and everybody gets sued. <laughs> and no, no, I was seriously looking into being, to running donkeys. I thought that would be quite good, you know, just, you know, just, you know, just walking the donkeys up and down. And yeah. in, in, in a summer, I thought, you know, I've done stand-up, but this isn't going to, you know, I'm going to do gigs, but it's not going to go massive. And then, and then Ken Loach ruined me bloody career. <laughs> Your whole donkey yeah, idea. Uh, yeah. A lot of donkeys had to be sent to the knackers yard as well, Ken Loach. <laughs> When yeah. that film comes out, yeah. Ken, yeah. Ken Loach, the donkey killer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Kess, the donkey. Go, Kess, go. <laughs> How do you train a donkey? <laughs> you should have looked into that before you started thinking, uh, taking that up, David. I know, I know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so what, so what, what was the process? How did, how did this role end up coming to you? Oh, a mate of mine... You know, up in Edinburgh, we did 12 Angry Men. Uh, the comics did 12 yeah. Angry Men. And the producer, I mean, this is crazy. The producer sent me a, basically said a text. He says, Ken Lush is looking for a bloke your age to be in his new film. Get in touch with the casting people. And like, you know what comics are like. We just go, yeah, yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, Mrs. said, have you? And I went, there's me. We have I went, all right. And so I sent the text off. And when I, Daniel Blake, won the BAFTA, she said to me, we're in the, um, at the BAFTA, she said, We've still, I've still got the text you sent, Ken. <laughs> for the, and she said, do you want to see it? And I'd never seen it for ages, and it went. And I, was, I went, hi, I'm Dave Johns. I'm a 59-year-old stand-up comic. Yeah, Ken Loach is looking for a bloke to be in his new film. I'd be up for that. <laughs> She says, Ken pissed himself laughing. <laughs> and so I got to meet him. for, And I just thought, I'm going to meet Ken Loach. Yeah, yeah. Ten minutes, I thought, this is going to be a right old laugh meeting Ken Loach. And, that's, and, he, and he said, and I, and I talked to him for ten minutes. He just talked about my dad, because I come from the same place that the film was made by. Yeah. And, he, and he says to me, he goes, and he says, you got any questions? I went, yeah, I want to ask you a question about Kess. And he goes, yeah. and he goes what do you want to ask her? He goes, you know the bit where Judd's killed the Kestrel, and he's drunk, and he's lying on a couch, Billy Casper's over him going, you bastard, you bastard, you bastard. And he went, yeah, guys, well, just over his shoulder on a table in shot, there was a can of carnation milk. <laughs> I couldn't keep my eyes off it. It ruined the whole fucking film for us. <laughs> <laughs> and he just pissed himself laughing. <laughs> I did five, five castings with different actresses. Yeah. Never thought I'd ever get the part. Kept going, because he didn't tell us what it was. He didn't tell us what it was. He just, because he, 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 when you shoot a film with Ken, he, he shoots chronologically. Yeah. And he doesn't give you the script. He gives you a couple of pages of script. So he just... I, I was just doing scenes, like, oh, you two are workmates. She's come in. She's got a black eye. You think her boyfriend's beating her up. Talk to her. And he was just... You know, it was all those sort of things, yeah, you know? Yeah. And then I kept going, and I kept getting asked back in, and all my actor mates were going, just keep on doing what you're doing. Do what you're buried. And then he phoned me up and said, we won't offer you the part. And I went... <laughs> and he went... And he went, it's, it, it's a film called 
called I, Daniel Blake. You're playing Daniel Blake. And I thought, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I did say to him, oh, I thought it was Spider-Man. Geordie <laughs> 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 Spider-Man. And he just said, in, and he went, and he went, and he went, and, and you're, uh, you're navigating, uh, you're an out-of-work carpenter, and you're navigating the benefit systems. And I thought, <laughs> you know, and, and it won the fucking Palm Door. And, <laughs> it did and win all the those fucking, door. you know, and, and we filmed it for five weeks in Newcastle in Biker. Chronologically, you get a couple of pages of script each day. You don't, because he likes to, he doesn't want you to preempt the scenes you're going to do. And he just, and, he, and, and I finished, I thought, wow, I've been working with Ken Loach, brilliant. Um, I, I was one day we were standing and filming in the, in, in the bathroom, I was supposed to fix a toilet. And it was really cramped. And he's only got the camera guy in, Raw Robbie Ryan. So Ken stands in the shower unit. And, we, and, and I was just standing beside him. And I just pressed this imaginary button. And I went, Professor, to the 60s in the time machine. <laughs> <laughs> and he went, back to the 60s. He goes, I know I shouldn't have left the 60s, should I? <laughs> and we filmed it. And it just and it went absolutely batshit crazy. Right time, right place. Um, uh, um, hit, a, hit a nerve, you know? Yeah, and his new film's coming out on the first of uh, um, uh, called uh, called Sorry We Missed You, and it's again that's about zero as contracts. I think that's going to cause another stink, you know. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, but it's but it's obviously led to like amazing opportunities for you, and amazing like just the weird you being in in BAFTA and all the uh, red um, carpets and meeting all the big films. Do you know stars? what the weirdest one? I'm standing in the Cannes Film Festival. It's not a word of a lie, and this is the weirdest thing, right? And I'm just trying to be, you know, I'm just. And I'm standing with the girl who played Katie, and Donald Sutherland comes walking towards us. <laughs> and I'm like, it's like, answer, that's Donald Sutherland? And he comes to me, and he's about, about a couple of feet away from us, and he goes, Dave. And I went, Donald. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, this is absolutely insane, man. <laughs> It's insane, man. Yeah. You, 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 you know, bloody, I saw bloody, what do you call him, bloody, I, I, I'm in the hotel, you know, the big posh hotel. And, and that's where they got. And, uh, and it's, um, it's, uh, it, it, it's, um, I walked across the hotel thingy, and the guy goes, come here, Dave. The publisher goes, I want you to meet somebody. He goes, Stephen, this is Dave, is in Ken's play. And I goes, Steven Spielberg. <laughs> and he goes, yeah. And I goes, I goes, oh, I goes, hello. And he goes, <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, he goes, Congratulations on your film. Uh, everybody in Cannes is raving about it. I haven't seen it yet, but I hear your performance is, 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 is remarkable. Congratulations. So I went, so how's the BFG going? <laughs> 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 and he goes, and he goes, yeah, we're really pleased with the, uh, with the response. <laughs> and I said, because you know Ken Loach, he couldn't make a film like the BFG. And he went, well, I guess not. Ken's more political. And I went, no, he'd want a real giant in it. <laughs> And I went, and I'm going, shut the fuck up. <laughs> and I goes, you can't get them. <laughs> like, as you probably tried for ages, and had to get Mark Rylands. And Spielberg looked at me like, yeah. you know, I think you remember when people don't know whether you're a nutcase or whether you're taking a piss. He was, and he's going, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, if you never, so, if you, so you go, why has Dave never been in the Steven Spielberg movie? Because he thinks I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but, but now, when they, and then people just keep offering me film parts. It's, yeah. it, it, it's crazy. I've just done a film with a mate of yours who's been, uh, Alison Steadman. Yeah, Alison Steadman, yeah, who's done in my... 20, 23 Walks, which is about two pensioners, 60s, who meet on 23 Dog Walks, and it's about their relationship. It's a love story for pensioners. It's got dogs and pensioners getting on. <laughs> who wouldn't want to see that? <laughs> and I had my first love scene. Whoa! Wow. 63 <laughs> years of age. <laughs> Yeah. You and Alison? Oh, uh, me and Alison. And like, she's done loads. And she was telling me, she goes, she goes, oh, I did one once in this sort of uh, late 60s with, 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 uh, with um, Tom Jones. And, he, and, he says, and she says, we're sitting on the bed. And he was saying to her, oh, you know, Alison, I'm a singer, you know. I'm a singer, you know. And I, I, I really don't, uh, I really don't, uh, um, I've never done anything this before, you know. He's, he's from Mumbai, by the way. <laughs> 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 he says, I never done any of this, you know, but but you know, if, if you can help me. So he just went for it, and she says, and she was like, give me this, you know, and they did about three takes, and then he sat in the bed and he went, I don't know about you, Alison, but I'm feeling bloody horny now. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So the goes to me, so I'm a bit nervous. So, and she goes, and I goes, we're going to be, she says, you're going to be naked. It's going to be tastefully done, you know. It's going to be tastefully done, but it's going to be under the curtain. It's going to be under the curtains. It's going to be under the duvet. Yeah. But so, so I says, there's where you wear this thing called a modesty pouch. Yeah. You know? So I goes, so, 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 they, so they give me this thing, and Alison's got something on, and we're both come out, we've both got, well, night, we're sort of like, we're, we're bathrooms on, we're on set, it's a closed set, there's the focus puller, the camera, and there's a couple of the crew sound, but it's very, and all the monitors on the set are turned off and everything like that. And so, well, 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 we're waiting. And I got on, she's, she's, she's got a great sense of humor. Yeah, she's right. So, so I'm going, ah, oh, in the look, and I can't, this is really uncomfortable, this. This is really uncomfortable. And it, it, it goes, well, it's industry standard. And I'm like, well, I'm a jury, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and the costume goes, give us a look. So, so I thought, oh, I'll just did. So I opened my thing, right? And she goes, you've got on back to front. Of <laughs> and both me, me balls were hanging out of each side. <laughs> it was like Dumbo's face. <laughs> I see an elephant fly. Honestly, I went, it's Dumbo's face. And when I said that, <laughs> they had to stand the crowd room, the crew down for 25 minutes. Because <laughs> no, the focus puller's going, I can't really pull focus. And it was, yeah, they had it on the wrong way. So, yeah, yep. so. <laughs> so these are the sort of things, even though I get on set, I'm, I'm a liability. You man. are. You are a liability. They shouldn't let. They shouldn't let comments. Alison plays my mum in my Radio Four sitcom. So you fucked my mum now, and I, that makes it. That makes it very difficult yeah. for me to, <laughs> to, to to do the rest. But it was so weird having to do that. Like, yeah. You know, in like we did this shot, and then I was lying on top of her while they were changing something in the bus. I think they were. They call it swinging in lanes. Yeah. And uh, I know all the terminology now, and I'm lying on top, and I started laughing. She went, "What are you laughing at?" I goes. I'm shagging Alice instead. <laughs> <laughs> Abigail's party. Okay. Who can forget that? My goodness. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I've, I've come up with a new of question as a basis of uh, reading a few of the facts uh, in, on your website, which is very useful, actually. Not, I wish everyone did what you did. On your website, there's just a whole Full page. There's a whole page of facts, which makes my job very easy. Yeah, 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 so I'll ask facts. you this my question. Website, you, that you'll all go on tomorrow yeah. and see where I'm touring. Yeah. You must do. Um, I'll ask you this question. I know you have an answer. Who is the most famous person you've been in a lift with? I'm going to ask other people this question now, Davey, because do you remember what the... Woody Allen. Was? It is Woody Allen. Yeah. How was it? It was really... It was really but what it was, was I was standing, basically. I, this is the whole story, right? And I don't know whether this was... But, but this happened. I was in the toilet at the hotel in Cannes in the main hotels big in the road and I was in the hotel and I was a bit pissed and Woody Allen came into the toilet yeah. and I went and I thought I remembered about Steven Spielberg and I thought don't fucking talk to him right <laughs> <laughs> so I just went into the cubicle and I don't know whether it was him but somebody went to the cubicle next door and, 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 and I heard him going mm. <laughs> <laughs> so when I got in the lift I, I didn't say anything, and I was going up in the lift, and he was going up in the lift, and I was just there, and when the, I went, bing, and I, and, I, and, I, and I walked out of the lift, and just as the lift doors shut, he went, I heard you laughing. <laughs> <laughs> and I always dreamt, Woody Allen is a massive hero of mine, he really is, and I always thought I'd be sitting with maybe a glass of brandy one night, talking yeah. about Compton. <laughs> You know, Woody, I've found some of your material. Well, yeah, Dad, you know, it's yeah. not going, I'd listen to him having a shit. <laughs> oh, dear. I mean, here's some other facts uh, from, your, uh, from your website. Uh, you met uh, the guy who plays Homer Simpson in Edinburgh? So embarrassing as well. Why yeah. are my stories embarrassed? Yeah, yeah. Well, I wanted you to be embarrassed. Do you remember when they went up to do the, the whole cast went to Edinburgh to read? They, to, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. And, and the whole cast were there, and they read some scenes from Far from, from, from the Simpsons. We were, and it was all comics and everything. In the in the previous, they had this big chat, and it was uh, um, Dan uh, um, Castellani. Yeah, yeah, all the all the cast and uh, Matt Groening who was there. And I said as a question, I went. I, I, put, I put my hand up and he goes, yeah. And I said, uh, I'd like to ask Matt Groening a question. And he went, 
Yeah, I goes there. How many pens have you got? <laughs> and he went, what? I said, how many pens have you got? I goes, just a ballpark figure. <laughs> and he went, no, he went, he went, on me now? I went, yeah, in the house, aren't we? I mean, <laughs> how many pens have you got? And then afterwards, <laughs> and then afterwards, we were in the bar, and I had a couple of glasses of wine, and, and Dan, and you don't do this, and Dan Cast, what's he called, Dan Cast? Castellane the, 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 yeah. He was there, and I went up to him and I said, I'm a massive big fan of The Simpsons, like everybody here is. I'm a comic, I'm doing a show here. And I goes, I know this is really naff, I goes, but would you do who am I for is? And he went, yeah, but you gotta close your eyes. And as I closed my eyes, I went, oh fuck, and I opened them and he fucked off out the door. <laughs> And as I closed my eyes, I went, no, no, no. <laughs> that was pretty That is so but, good. But that's what he had to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. True. Yeah, uh, and uh, there's, there's a lot. There's a lot. Because you've, uh, have you really, there's some things on the facts that I don't think are true. They are true. Well, there's one that's definitely not true, that one of them is that you have a false leg but a real foot. <laughs> that is, that isn't, that isn't true. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you shared a bag of chips with Cindy Crawford. Yes, I did. I was. Uh, we did one for the. We, we did one for the Cuckoo's Nest. Yeah. In London, remember we. Uh, we, we went I do. Down I saw there. it. Was fantastic. And Christian Slater was in it, and in, 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 it had loads of, f f f uh, f um, sort of like famous people were coming in. There was there was like Dennis Hopper would come in one night, and, and like I'd be sort of like, I, I played so I'm like this, and I was like watching out, looking for people, you know, and and she came and she came and, and we went to. Some, do you know that theatre or whatever it is? So, yeah. No, no, um, um, Century, this thing. So, oh, yeah. So we're in the thing and, uh, and we were waiting for Christian and she goes, and, we're, and I'd got some chips <laughs> when I came out of, the, <laughs> out of the thing. And she goes, oh my God, you got uh, French fries. She's just going to have one? And I went, yeah. So I'm in the back lane eating chips <laughs> and, and, and Owen O'Neill, who's another comic, yeah. is in a taxi driving past <laughs> <laughs> And then afterwards he went, I've just seen Tiff having a bag of chips with Cindy Crawford. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she was greeting the chips off. And then afterwards, we went up to the theatre and, and Dennis Hopper was there. And this is not McClunk, but no, this is true. Was <laughs> big friend and, and, and Kevin Spacey. And I said, this is before he was, you know. <laughs> and he never fucking tried it on with me. No. I never got I never got champagne and strawberries on the stage. So he said, so Ke no, this is honestly. So Kevin Spacey says to me, he goes, he goes, he goes, uh, he's reading the program. He goes, uh, you're ex uh, you're all stand up comics, yeah. And I went, yeah. And he goes, he goes, and I goes, you used to be a stand up, didn't you? And he went, no, I used to do impersonations of. Uh, he, he was from Mumbai as well. <laughs> I used to do impersonations of singers, you know. Uh, he says, I never did stand up. And he goes, okay. And he, and he goes, you? He says, here, you've been in uh, Dubai. Uh, you've been uh, in uh, Abu Dhabi. Uh, you've done gigs in, 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 in India. He goes, he goes, how do you do that? I went, well, I speak uh, Punjabi and I speak uh, Urdu. <laughs> And I speak four dialects of Arabic. <laughs> and I hope I can say this. And he went, and he went, really? And I went, of course I don't, you daft cunt. <laughs> <laughs> and I swear to God, in Dennis Hopper went, he called you a cunt! He called you a cunt! <laughs> That's not a word of a lie. <laughs> It was hilarious. It was hilarious. And Spears, he's fierce. That's why he's probably started touching people. <laughs> allegedly, allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. allegedly a lot, though, eh? Right? <laughs> a lot of allegedly. <laughs> a lot of allegedly. I love the way you did with the way when you introduced yourself. When you got introduced to Christian Slater, who played the Jack, the Jack Nicholson part in uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Yeah, yeah, uh, we, all, uh, we all had a table reading, and we were all comics, and he was a big star, wasn't he, you know? And he came in, and, and he went, and, he, and, we, and we had a break, and we had a cup of coffee, and a cup of tea, and we're all in the little Mackenzie Crouton hall up there. Yeah. And he goes, uh, he, he goes, hi, guys, yeah, and so I goes, yeah, Christian. 
I just want to say, I really loved Minority Report. <laughs> and he went, uh, I, I wasn't in it. I went, I know I just wanted to see a Report. <laughs> They went, you fucking cuss! <laughs> I'm they... never going to get a job in Hollywood, I'll tell you that. I'm doomed to do independent films like Fisherman's Friends and stuff like that, you know? But I bet they love it, though, don't they? Because uh, uh, you must be the only person who moves in that circles who isn't licking all the, these people's asses apart from Kevin Spacey, allegedly. Uh, <laughs> do you know the, Co the Covens Gardens Hotel, right? Yeah. We, we went there and they've got an honesty bomb. We're there one night late, right? And we're all drinking. And, and, and you sign for the thing. And I went behind the thing and I, and I was getting all the drinks. And I goes to Christian, you know, what you mean? He goes, don't put it on my room. Put it on Dennis Hopper's room. <laughs> So I was WhatsApp together, so I'm just putting on his and then after I'm standing all goes to him. I went to bed at nine o'clock and I spent five hundred pounds. <laughs> Dennis, you must be getting up in the middle of the night. <laughs> but it is the thing is, you know, it's just a laugh, isn't it, you know? <laughs> so I don't think fame's changed you though, Davey, is it? I think it's <laughs> But you know what it is? Because I've had to learn. Because the thing is, Ken, Ken Loach, when I work with Ken Loach, Ken films differently. He has a very small crew. He, he uses lenses, so the camera's never in your face. So when I go on... So, so the next film I had to do, I had to learn... Like, ev everybody thinks you're... You just know when you go on a film set. Yeah. So, like, I was, it was with Stevie Graham. I mean, he's a brilliant... You know, Stevie Graham. The, the, mm -hmm. I mean, he's a fantastic actor. And, and it was uh, Jason Fleming. And I'm in this thing... And, I have, and I'm just and all the cameras and the lights and massive big crew and so the, it's like everything it's a working class thing I think I don't know if you think but, but, but what I think it is is that you, you either just talk in and shite to cover up your fucking vulnerability <laughs> or you get pissed right and <laughs> and so I just think if I'm just talking and making people laugh yeah. then they can't go hang on a minute he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing <laughs> and when they do realise that's too late they've shot the thing in I've got to <laughs> But now I'm learning all the time, you know, I'm getting more and more technique, camera, and getting more and more in, you know, I, I'm, I've just done this film with Alison, and, and, you know, and I'm, I'm getting, in, in people are offering us parts. This is why I've got the beard now, I'm doing a film up in the Hebrides next month. It's about these two kids do a bungle drug deal, and they go and hide in a Hebridean island in a little uh, sort of bothy, and I'm this weird fisherman who gets them... <laughs> Who gets them out yeah. um, to um, um, to uh, cockles because I'm shipping cockles to Spain. Okay. But I'm going to have a load of paperwork in, after the 31st. <laughs> 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 so business me just going, oh, for fuck's sake, yeah, another phone! <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a minute, I've got an Irish passport. I could just get them through. Um, um, so, so, yeah, so it's about that. So I've got to grow this beard and I've got, like, like it, it's uh, November the 5th we start. It's okay. only five days I'm doing it. And I've got to do it. And it, and it goes... <laughs> he, he comes in with a... a, a, a what was it? Um, um, a thick West... Scot, uh, a West Coast of Scotland accent. Okay. So it's a bit like this, you know what I mean? Like that's. <laughs> I find a cockle fisherman would play it a bit like this. I mean, kind of... <laughs> hey, if what you call him do that, buddy, what you call him? Um, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, um, the guy from Sheffield. What, what do you call him? He was in Game of Thrones. What do you call him? Um, Sean, Sean Beam. It hasn't stopped him, bloody yeah. <laughs> Sean, you're playing an American scientist. Well, I think I'd play him with a Sheffield. <laughs> <laughs> You're playing a Russian sub captain. Well, I play with a Sheffield accent. <laughs> no, it's great. I mean, it's 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 insane, really, isn't it? With all of the, and then film after film, coming. Fisherman's Friends has done amazing. Well, you do another another Fisherman's Friends. Yeah, film? Fish, Fisherman's Friend two, the sequel. Oh. <laughs> Boo! Boo. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, you know, and it took it took it took a load of money at the box office. Yeah. It just feel good. It's it's a daft feel good but it had a great cast in it we were five weeks down in Cornwall at Port Isaac we had a great laugh down there you know 
Um, um, and so, yeah, so, so, so it's really looking. I'm meeting loads of nice people, and it's just a, it's just a bit of a laugh, you know what I mean? And, it, it, and I think it's like because I've just got a film career. I mean, everybody thinks, God, wouldn't we create two films? And suddenly you get in it going, oh, bloody hell, I'm doing it, you know what I mean? And, and, yeah. it's, it, it, and, it's, it, and it's bonkers, and it's, it, and it's just got to keep enjoying it. And I mean, like, <laughs> like, like when they say to you, oh, you've been nominated for Best European Actor. And you're going, what the fuck? <laughs> and then this is, in, this is, cr- and the guys, oh, they're all mental. <laughs> and we went over to Berlin to the film festival, and, uh, and it was uh, um, Do- Dominic uh, um, Cumberbatch, he was in it. In, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dominic what, Cumberbatch. What, what, what you got? I can't remember his um, 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 Be- uh, oh, God, I can't Do you want it. Benedict Cumberbatch first, or do you want Dominic? <laughs> Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> Benedict Cumberbatch, oh, yeah, okay. and and uh, and um, the guy who's in. Prometheus. I mean, he's no Davy Johns. Let's face it. Uh... The guy who's in Prometheus who plays the robot. Uh, oh yeah, Fassbender. Fassbender. And my yeah. daughter said to me, she goes, she's fourteen. She goes, Dad, are you up against Michael Fassbender for best actor? I went, yeah. She goes, smash him, Dad. Smash him. <laughs> <laughs> and what you call him? One Hugh Grant. Okay. And Hugh Grant for. Uh, that one where he plays the husband of the singer, uh, Dor- um, uh, uh, you know, the singing. Uh, uh, she, she's a really bad singer. Oh, yeah, yeah. Florence. This... Yes, there he is. There's Mark yeah. Mode sitting there in the audience. <laughs> good work, good or work. Or somebody that never gan zoot. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, this is not, and I swear this is, this is true. He came up to me and he went... <laughs> and he goes... Um, um, he goes, hey, you should have won this. Your film's outstanding. And I went, is it then? <laughs> <laughs> and, he was, and he wasn't expecting that. <laughs> and he went, and he went. <laughs> I could see him going, he's got a Geordie accent, he'll take it off us. <laughs> and I said, you knew you were going to win this award. And he went, I didn't. I, I, no, no, I, I guess, yes, you did. Because you're the only one here with a carrier bag. <laughs> Against the fast spender. Yeah, fast spender. Did you bring a carrier bag? And he went, no, I didn't bring a carrier bag. Cumberbatch, did you have a carrier bag? I've got no... You got a phone call, didn't you? Uh, you've been nominated and bring a carrier bag. Because <laughs> you didn't want to be walking and running with an award, do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't. He's going on Hugh Grant going, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. <laughs> it's do, you know, do you know what it is? You know what it is? It's, it's, it's because I come from a... The, the one thing is, I've got a load of mates, right? Who are, who, who are just... Who, who, who take the piss out of me fucking all the time. And so you have to... You, you, you can't be... Like, you know what I mean? You've got to... And that's... Who I've been brought up, but a lot of people laugh, do. Isn't it? A lot of people don't behave, and, it's, and weirdly, I think a lot of people who maybe had a long career suddenly it happens, and then they—it's very difficult not to turn into a bit of an arsehole when you become kind of super famous. I think, and I've seen. Well, I'm it. only sixty-three. I've got plenty of time. <laughs> yeah, but well, straight... I'm in the old people's home, eh? <laughs> but straight away, most people go through at least a little period of being a bit of an arsehole. But you don't seem to. Have, that doesn't seem to have happened today. Because you know what it is. It, it, it's because. It doesn't, it doesn't, to me, it can I'm very lucky. I'm fortunate that I'm in this position. And, yeah, of course you get annoyed at things, but, but, but then you just go, have a fucking word with yourself, man, you know? <laughs> and I think if more people said, just have a fucking word with yourself, you know? And, 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 and I think that, that's, it, it's about, and, and, and not take yourself fucking so serious. Yeah, and it's, it's insecurity as well. I think you kind of hear these stories of people... Well, well, that's from divas and, and most people who cases. most people who blow the th- yeah, yeah yeah it's like because they fear that it's gonna go fucking but I've still got the fucking donkeys if it all goes to the <laughs> <laughs> I just keep renewing my license. <laughs> Hello, it's Mr. Johns here. Oh yes, uh, I'd like to renew the license for the donkeys again, please. Oh, is the career going a little bit slow? Is it? <laughs> Never you mind. <laughs> But I think it's a case of, 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 of keeping your foot... And, you know, my dad was always saying to me when I was a kid, stop showing off. Nobody likes to show off. And I think that sticks in you. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Although you're a comedian, so that didn't that didn't that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yeah, yeah, but, but I think that's why, that's no, why, it, it, it's like, you know that thing when you just feel as though sometimes you think, oh my God, I shouldn't be here, you know, that yeah. thing, you know, and, and, and it, it, it's a case of just enjoying it while, it, because it could fucking end the more they just go, hang on a minute, he's fucking rubbish, and, <laughs> and so just enjoy it, I think, yeah. I mean, you know, we just have fun with it, you know. I mean, it could be. Do you think? Do you ever worry that you've just you're still you're in a comedy club and you've really banged your head really badly and you're in fact just lying in a hospital bed? And I, think is, I'm in a just... I think I'm in a coma. I think I'm in a coma. And all these noises are just people talking next door. Because <laughs> every now and then I hear. Boop. 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 Wake up, Davy. Wake up, Davy. Please wake up. Three, four, wake up. Uh, three, four, seven <laughs> milligrams of pentanol. <laughs> Boop. Boop. What? What? Yeah. And what I like, though, as well, is a lot of people would have become a successful, proper film star and, and left stand-up behind, but you're still doing your stand-up. You're touring your stand-up. Why thing. would you ever not want to stand on stage with a group of people, uh, strangers, in a room like this and make people laugh? Yeah. It's the best thing. You know, you can watch comedy on the internet, you can watch it on, on Live at the Apollo. These are the places where stand-up is where it's should be yeah. and where it should be is in a live comedy club <laughs> where where it's happening in front of you it's happening in front of you you know and all the see on, on you know all the shit bits are cut out on telly here you get the shit bits as well and the shit bits <laughs> make the good bits even funnier that's very it? much my philosophy that's it, very much a, that's this podcast philosophy all you want to do is the, the shit bits <laughs> don't get more than the funny bits <laughs> but, but the thing is you know it is and I do like doing stand up you know I'm doing my one man show here on the 22nd of October yeah, my um, so a few lot here if you want to come there's uh, still uh, a few tickets left um, <laughs> 326. <laughs> but, but it's the 22nd on Tuesday here, so that's me doing um, me show here. But but you know, but but you know, I, I just like it, it. It's just great to walk out on stage and just it, it just have fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think I, I think that because I think all the way through anybody's life, humour is what makes life bearable. Sometimes, doesn't it? You know? Yeah. And I think when but once you're used, I mean, you're a writer as well. You've written. You you uh, co-wrote the. Uh, the Shawshank Redemption play with Owen, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you've, yeah, yeah. you've been writing, yeah. you've been writing sitcoms, and you're writing your own material. I think the, the acting's kind of fun, I think, isn't it? But it's kind of, it's sort of quite a boring, long process, right? When you're actually doing it, the whole stuff around it. So sitting, if you've got a lead role, you're doing it all the time. But if yeah. you're sitting around, but that's why you can have. That's why me and Alison Stedman, when we're sitting around waiting for shots, we had this. There, this phone went off. It went <laughs> like one of those old old-fashioned ring too. So I just went, hello, why tall 247? <laughs> and Alison went, hello, it's Felicity here. <laughs> and I went, where have you been, Felicity? I'm sorry, Gerald, but I have to tell you I'm leaving you. <laughs> and I went, what? Why? She says, I'm pregnant. And I went, what, Felicity? She goes, yes, with triplets. And I says, who's the father? And we're just improvising. And she went, <laughs> Brian. I went, my father? <laughs> <laughs> and we just did that. So that's what we do all the yeah, way through yeah. the whole thing. And, and, and I think that's what it is. It's about... So how can you... I can't take what, what I do seriously when I see all the fucking madness in it, you know what I mean? And I just call it out. I mean, Ken Loach has got a great sense of humour. Mark Rylance came up to Ken Loach in Cannes and he said to Ken, Ken, your film is magnificent. And he looked at me and he goes, your performance is what I always try to reach. And I know what he meant by that, he meant the truth in it. Yeah. And he said to Ken, he goes, he goes, Last month, um, uh, Daniel, Daniel Day-Lewis came over to my house and we watched all your movies back to back. And Ken went, did you not want to kill yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what you see. You don't go, oh, well, thank you very much. What did you think? Can you imagine them two fuckers watching your work? Can you imagine <laughs> Daniel Day-Lewis and them two going, oh, yes, like this, you know? And, and so you have to, like, like you can't fucking take yourself too serious. Or you, or you, or you are an arsehole if you, if you take yourself too serious, you know? Sure, sure. And that's how I get on with people who are just having, having fun with it because it's, it's something that came out the blue for me. I never thought that. I thought I'd be w w walking, your kids would be gone, put your donkey on here, it's two quid. <laughs> <laughs> and, I'd, and I'd have all little hats and I'd have, like, the comics names of the comics I've worked with. 
<laughs> be like, you know, the little flighty one, the little feisty one. That'd be Lee Evans. <laughs> In the sort of like the, the, the stroppy one, be Jack D. <laughs> <laughs> and the one who thinks nobody likes him, Michael McIntyre. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not true. He's a good he's lad, mate. He's a good lad. Um, uh, there's a couple more things from the, your facts which have been uh, invaluable. <laughs> what about the time you played an Irish pub in Bali? Do you know this? Oh, you remember this one? Oh, God. Would you like to come and do some gigs in Bali? Fucking yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did go out with Johnny Candon, who was an Irish comic, and was sitting watching his sunset on a beach. And I said to him, I really love you, Johnny, but I'd rather be here with my missus than you. <laughs> and so he goes, It's in an Irish pub. So we've got this Irish pub, right? And this, honestly, and there's, and there's a band playing. So again, what, what, so what's it? He goes, oh, no, the band are going to stop. And then you're going to do the gigs. Right. And this is an Irish theme pub, right? And I goes, what? So he goes, and the people are going, and he goes, okay, okay, that's the end of the band. Can have some comedy now. Can have some comedy. And here you go. And he just handed me the mic. And, and I looks over. And there's an Indonesian dwarf dressed as a leprechaun <laughs> dancing on top of the pool table. <laughs> and, I, and I went, I'm glad you got me rider, because I never go on unless I've got that. <laughs> and, and all the people are dancing to this heavy metal stuff, and then they stop and they go, and I'm going, and, and they're looking at me going, what? And I'm going, hey, hi there, where are you from? You know, and it, and it's, Fucking insane. And this little guy going, de, 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 de. <laughs> and at one point I thought, and I stopped, I went, you can see him, can't you? <laughs> the little leprechaun. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that happened. I did a gig on a nuclear submarine. Right. Uh, for, for the um, army, uh, for, for the army navy, sort of like, you know, um, it's like CSE. They flew me to Guam and it was me in a wardroom of all these officers in a nuclear submarine and they were all dressed as women. They all had right. dresses on. That wasn't a tough gig at all. <laughs> 45 minutes, I died on me arse. And one of these guys goes, hey, yeah, did you just do this for a holiday? I went, yeah, I phoned up, I phoned up Thomas Cook and said, have you got two weeks for me dying on me arse in Guam? <laughs> And I flew out with this guy from the Navy and we was chatting away and we are having a right laugh. We landed in Tokyo. We had a night in Tokyo. We went out. We were drinking salt. He had a lovely thingy. Cracking hard at it. Got the thing. Got on the submarine. Died on me arse. Travelled all back with a <laughs> fucker not speaking to us. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going, look, it's really hard to do a gig on a nuclear submarine. <laughs> and I went, and I thought, I know what would be funny. I'll go, here, you know, these pipes... What happens when you dive to leaky pipe depth and all the water starts... It was a bit like this fucking thing here. Everybody's going... Because I thought this would get a laugh and they all look at me like, what? Do you, you know when, all, when you get too much pressure and all the water comes pouring out the pipes? Silence. <laughs> and, and, and I had to just keep on going and they were just... And because they all knew each other, they, they were just... you know, And it was just... And, the yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was going, I must have been on here now 30, well, 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I did get three grand for it, like Yeah, so. that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> Long way to go to die in your ass for 10 grand, <laughs> about three grand, but yeah, but yeah. So, so I've had some weird gigs. So even there. like for the, from your early life when you're a bricklayer to just, to just being a stand-up comedian is a massive change. I mean, you've had this incredible life of <laughs> variety even before you had the film star stuff. Yeah, it was Could a, you have dreamt of that? Are there any walls we can go and look at that you made in, I in did. Newcastle? It, yeah, 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 yeah. Jasmine, you know Jasmine Cricket Ground? Yeah. Right, right at the top of the Jasmine Cricket Ground where the fence goes along, there's a, there's a wall, it's like a circular wall. Yeah. <laughs> I built that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone know it? Is that, is Don't that a good wall? laugh. It's hard to build a bloody curved wall yeah. like that. Is it still there? I mean, it must have been there for quite a while. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. For, 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 Forty odd years. Yeah, I was, yeah. I, I was, you know, I was bloody. What the last time I did Brickley in, in anger <laughs> was um, was when I was twenty eight or something. So yeah. it's been a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I built that. Yeah, I sang on stage with Bo Diddley. Okay. <laughs> yeah, at the May Fair when the May Fair, remember the May Fair that was there? Yeah, I got up on stage with Bo Diddley. <laughs> 
Then I shagged her afterwards. <laughs> Did he invite you up or was it? Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I was in the front and he goes, he goes, come on, get up, get up. Because I was and I got up and he was going, and he was going, he goes, I remember, I remember when I started in this business. He goes, he goes, uh, Mr. Uh, Howling Wolf. And he went to me and I went, the flower pot man. <laughs> The biggest spotty dog in the world. And he's going, yeah. We're just doing all these names, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, and oh, Bo Diddley. And I'm going, that's Bo Diddley. You know? Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, yeah, so I did that, yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and I was a bricklayer. And it was, uh, yeah, it was all, it was all, it was all, you know. It's the same thing. It's just, it's just when I was a bricklayer, I used to take, take they used to call me the manhole king. <laughs> And Kevin Spacey wasn't interested. Yeah, in ba <laughs> yeah, baby, you want me now, don't you? <laughs> Basically, we used to build these big, 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 these big housing estates, and I used to always get into trouble for, for taking the piss and talking to all the, and, and stopping the other apprentice from working. Yeah. So they said we've got to get rid of him. So they said what we'll do is we'll send him out into the fields as the site moves up, and he can do the manholes. <laughs> so they'd get a big dump out truck of bricks, and they'd drive me to this man in this field, and the, and the site was in the site would move up, and they would just dump all the bricks and all the mortar, and they just in this big hole, and I'd just build the sewer manholes for when the site caught <laughs> you, you caught up with us, yeah. you know. But I just put the radio on and listen to fucking Radio One, you know. And sort of, <laughs> so I don't think there's any manholes on that estate, you know. <laughs> The shite's just going into the deck. <laughs> Curse you, manhole king! <laughs> but it doesn't, it, it doesn't make... But you wouldn't, have, you wouldn't have invited me on your podcast if I'd been one of the best manhole builders. Uh, in you you never know. And tonight we have one of the finest manhole builders. <laughs> yeah, 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 so I did that. And I had fun at building site, but I just, you know... I always thought I don't... I always... I think what you've got to do is, right, which is the biggest crime is... Is pigeonholing people into, 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 into like you can't do that. Yeah. You you've got to do this. This is your lot. You 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 work in a factory. You work that, and it's and it, that 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 is bullshit. It, 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 now not everybody can do, but you've always got to have a go. You know, and, and that's what I've done. And, and you know, some like like you know, loads. Of, I used to be a professional gambler, man. Yeah. The, the, in, <laughs> I used to go. I used to knock around with these farmers. And they used to go to Sedgefield Racecourse. And they used to bet massive, big, massive, and this is in the 80s, like massive amounts of money, you know? In the, in the most I lost was a thousand quid on a horse called Chatham. Stevens, uh, uh, um, uh, Peter Scudamore was riding it. It was clear by, by, a, by a mile, and it fell at the last fence. And that's what I saw. But in them days, you used to have, have to pay tax if you got a ticket. So if you didn't get a ticket, you, you didn't have to pay the tax. So if you won, you got the money back. And if you lost, you would have to pay tax. So and they would write your name down. So I had a long herringbone trench coat. So they used to call me the court. So on the site, so on such a race I was called the court. And I told this to Mark Lamar. And he said, are you sure that's what they were calling me? <laughs> <laughs> and I tried to be a professional, you know, just those, you know, those stupid things where you just think, I know, I'll be a professional gambler, yeah. aren't you? Miss, Mississippi gambler on the... <laughs> On No Shields Ferry. <laughs> Who is the tall, dark stranger? The there, Maverick is his name. He's a gambler. We're on the Mississippi, no, on the Tyne, on the ferry. <laughs> He's got to play the fastest hand in poker because it's only 10 minutes across the. <laughs> <laughs> twist, twist, twist now! <laughs> But you know what's? In I think what's interesting and what's interesting about that Adelaide, that group of comedians that went to Adelaide, right? And it's um, I tried to write a, a TV show about about that because about all those guys going. But in though in the 1980s and 1990s, anyone could be a stand-up, and you and that group of guys who went to Adelaide that year, mm. all from really diverse backgrounds. Yeah. Parrot had worked on the docks, hadn't he? And yeah. and Smiley, yeah. and then there was you know me and Stu from university. Smiley, Smiley was a was a bicycle courier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y y y y y y you know, and and, uh, and and I think what it was was that it was a it, it was that's the one thing about stand up. It brings all these different people. You know, it brings university lads yeah, like yeah. yourself, yeah. mixing with a humble, like you know, <laughs> secondary modern lad like me. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, a few. You know, if I'd have been back at the schools, I'd have been taking your dinner money off. <laughs> 
But do you think it's like that still? Because I think that's I think that's a bit of a 25 years ago kind of thing. 20, 25 years ago, anyone could any, anyone could rock up and have a crack at stand up, and and people and people who and done other jobs were coming to do stand up, well, and now it feels like a profession that is people, much people more middle have got, class. People have got the eye on the on the prize. Yeah, yeah. Start, that's not my club in the in the comedy cafe on the Portman Westgate Road, the Time Theatre. 1989 was the first time I started, and all the students used to come, and it was something like five quid to get in, and we had Jack D and and and, and, and uh, Lily Evans. We were starting off, and Joe Brand and and Coogan and all them. You yeah. know, they're all you, you know, and it was. People were going, it was like, what, you're going to give me a hundred quid in 1990 for just stand up talking shite? Yeah, I'd like, you know. But but now when you look at comics, they've got this eye on 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 the ball, you know, on where they're going to go, on on like how far they're going to get. And back then it wasn't like that. It was just like, it was just messing about. Yeah, you know? but also people were coming at it from, you know, people were coming in their 30s and 40s yeah. and starting at that time. Yeah. And now it that I started when I was 30. Yeah, it doesn't seem to happen. You know, you've got a bit of life experience and you've got some stories and you've got kind of... Uh, well, I gave, I gave, I gave uh, Ross Noble his first gigs when yeah. he was 14 at my club. And he, and he was so young, he had to stay in the kitchen while he went on and did five minutes. And his dad used to drive him down there, you know? Yeah. And, 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 and so there was all that, you know, when Harry Hill started down there and Alan Davis used to then use guys came and did the thing, you know? It was all that... In, 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 in you know the mighty bush lads and yeah, all that yeah. and, and you know so it's it, it... <laughs> it's alright we'll edit that out <laughs> um, uh, um, it's me uh, false, li- false yeah, it's, it's falling off last <laughs> the blood wasn't getting to it Dave that was the problem no I know I know <laughs> but, 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 but the thing is I think that's that's, that's more now it's a case of have, have, having a go. Yeah. And I think that's what you have to do. I always say to my daughter, just have a go, you know? It, it, and I know it sounds like, oh, God, that's so tragic. Just go, just have a go. Oh, oh, look, look, nobody can be a... But, but that's true, be, be, because that's what you have to do, because otherwise, you know, if I hadn't sent that text, yeah. I wouldn't have been doing films. If, if, if Daniel Blake had been set in Manchester, I wouldn't have been seen for it. Yeah. So it's those things of, when you get your chance... It's not look, it's you take your chance. And if you can take your chance when it happens, I just happen to be in the right place, right time. He was looking for me. It was the right part. Uh, I got on great with Ken. I was just being myself. Yeah. And the one thing Ken said to me, which is nice, he said, he said, because um, I'd never done any film acting, and he said, the one thing you've got to realise in this film is there's no music in this film. Uh, so there's no thing to, to let the audience feel to tell them how you how, how to feel. So you and Haley have to be true and you have to be real and you have to be honest with your emotion. And if you're honest and truthful with the emotion that you're playing, it'll look right on the screen. And that's what I try to do all the time. And, and, and that's the only training I've done. Yeah. And he said to me, so somebody said when they were interviewing, why did you pick Dave? And he said, because comics are very good at, at communicating. And he said, I knew when I met Dave, I'd get an honesty from him, and that's what I wanted for the part. And so that's, I think, what you bring to everything. That's what I try to bring to everything, yeah. really, you know? Good. Well, it's worked out, Davey. I'm very pleased for you, and I'm <laughs> oh, hoping, no. hoping you'll go from strength to strength. We're looking forward to everything you've got coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, massive round of applause. Dave John. <laughs> so David, so David John. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's been lovely. Thank you. How do you like them sky potatoes? <laughs>